Hey, it's Randy from Voices, and this is a follow-up video to our last video about GarageBand, where we discuss some of the beginner and entry-level tips to getting started using GarageBand for voiceover. Today, we're gonna cover some more of the advanced stuff, so things like project management, creating templates, uh, adding plugins to your session, things like keyboard shortcuts, which we'll sprinkle throughout, and then, of course, some editing tips to really elevate your experience using GarageBand for voiceover. Now, GarageBand is a little bit of a limited program in terms of features that it has for editing, uh, but we're gonna see how we can get the most out of our software today. So let's go ahead and create a new project. Now, as I mentioned in our previous video, we want to stay away from the project templates that are the voiceover templates. They're just, they're not very feature rich. And uh, this comes with a bunch of effects built in that you're just not going to want to use. So let's go ahead and create a new project. And then I'll show you how to make a template out of that project in just a minute. Now, before we click go, we want to go down here to the details and just make sure that our input and output device is set to our systems device. So if you're using a Focusrite Scarlett, for instance, or Universal Apollo, this is where you'd see that. And you just want to make sure you're using the right interface to get started. In this case, I don't have anything plugged in. So we're just going to say system settings. All right, now it's going to ask us to choose the track type that we'd like to get started with. So in this case, we just want to click audio and we want to make sure that our input is set to the proper input on our interface. So in most cases, that's going to be input one for you. So just go ahead and click that. And then you want to make sure you check, I want to hear my instrument as I play and record. And the next thing we want to do is get this session set up exactly how we want it to be sort of our default template that we're going to use every single day when we go to do our voiceover work. So we want to get rid of some things here that we don't think that we need. So let's go ahead and just clean this session up. These are effects here in our library. They're effect bundles. We want to completely ignore that and we want to do this ourselves. So let's go ahead and eliminate this whole library from our left side. Across the top, we have a couple more things that we can clean up. So the first thing that we want to do is change our session from beats project to time because we're recording in a linear space here and we're recording dialogue. We want to switch it to time, not beats per minute or anything like that. And then we want to turn off the count in and the metronome. Those don't need to be on there. These two buttons over here, we've got notes and loops. Notes might be helpful for you if you're in like a live directed session or something like that. And the client says, hey, I love take two. You could write down, you know, client loves take two. That might be useful for you. But generally speaking, we don't really need to touch this top bar anymore. Uh, let's work our way down here. So we have our first audio track. I'm going to go ahead and change this to dialogue. And you can see here that the level is defaulting quite low. So I'm going to click option and click on that. And it's going to bring it up to zero decibels. And of course, you can change the picture here if you'd like. So I'm going to make this a person just so I know it's very clear. And then down here at the bottom, we have our editing pane. If you don't see that, you can just press E on your keyboard and that'll make that pop up. We just want to make sure none of these options here are toggled on. So everything is off right now and that's great. And then we can press B here and go into our control panel. And we basically just want to make sure that everything is set to not be automatic. So we have this automatic level control. We don't want that. We want to control our levels manually. Uh, we want to make sure that our input is set to the right one. In this case, it is. For you, it might say Focusrite or Apollo, as we said earlier. Monitoring, we set that up so that we can hear ourselves while we're recording. Noise gate, we don't want it. And plugins, we don't want any of these either. So let's go ahead and remove these plugins. So you can do that just by going up here, no plugin and no plugin. And then we want to scroll down and turn off master echo and master reverb. Should call it delay, not echo, but that's a whole other thing. So let's jump over to the master channel. And we want to do the same thing here and turn all of these plugins off. So no plugin. And this is just going to give us a good starting base where we can start from scratch and then create a template from that. Then let's jump into our settings here and we'll make sure that all of the settings are the way that we want. So I'm not using a trackpad, so that doesn't really matter. All of this is OK. Audio MIDI, your device here will say your recording device, of course. Metronome doesn't matter. Loops doesn't matter. My info doesn't matter. And advanced, we want to make sure that we're checked into 24 bit uh, to give us the highest quality audio possible. And auto normalize, you want to make sure that this is selected as off. Normalizing your auditions can be really useful to make sure that you have really loud auditions every time because clients tend to prefer louder sounding audio and when they're going through a list of auditions. But we don't want anything that's going to be auto in our session. And the reason being is if a client says to you a year down the road, hey, can you jump in and add one more recording to this? If auto normalize is turned on, it's going to normalize that audio file without your control. And if your gain was set lower, now it has to pull the audio up, which also brings up your noise floor too. So let's make sure that that's toggled off. Once that's done, you're good to go. OK, so we've got our track all set up. We're happy with this. The next thing to do is to go in and add some plugins that we're going to want on every single recording. Let's just go ahead and start with an EQ and a compressor. So you'll notice GarageBand comes with a set of its own plugins. You can see here channel EQ and single band EQ 
And that's pretty nice. And they also have their own dynamics processing. So they'll have a compressor, limiter, etc. That's great, but I'm gonna go down here to audio units, and this is how you can access your plugins that you've installed that are third-party plugins. So you can see here I have plugins from Apple, plugins from Isotope, which is the third-party company that I use for plugins, as well as Waves, and you can see my list of plugins here from Waves. So I'm gonna go into my Waves plugins and add a Q8, which is an equalizer, which I like to put on all my vocals. And you can see it gives you two different types of views here. So we have our controls view, which is a bit of a challenging way to look at an equalizer. I don't really like to use it like that. So if it shows up like this for you, you can go and switch it to remote view, which will give you the actual plugins interface, which I find much easier to use. I'm gonna go ahead and put on this low cut here and I'm gonna drag this up to around 80 hertz. Now this is just something that I like to put on every channel, especially for voice, because if you have any plosives or any wind that leaves your mouth, hits that microphone, uh, you wanna get rid of that. Don't ever want that to be in your recordings in the first place, but if there is any sort of low end rumbling, 80 hertz is well below the human voice. Like not many people are capable of speaking that low. So that type of rumbling will be like trucks going by outside, uh, you know, the subway under your house, your, your HVAC system sort of rumbling away in your home. So just wanna roll off some of that low end there. I do this on every channel. And then of course I can sweeten it and do different things depending on what I want for that recording. But I want this to be what I have for templates. And next I'm gonna go ahead and add a compressor. So let's go down here, audio units, waves, same thing as last time we're gonna add our compressor. You can see again, it's giving me the GarageBand look here. So I'm gonna go ahead and click Views, Remote View. This gives me the actual UI of this plugin. And I'm gonna go ahead and use a factory default for voiceover, just as a good starting point. I'm gonna drag my threshold down just so it's hitting me just a little bit. Check, 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 check. Perfect, let's say that I'm happy with that as a good starting point. Now, one quick thing, a lot of people ask, should I add an EQ or a compressor first? The audio community is very divided on this. There's a lot of people with a lot of different opinions. I can tell you why I tend to put the EQ before the compressor. And my reasoning is, is that we were just talking about how there's unwanted low end down here. Now, low end is really, really high energy. It has a lot of power to move the needle on a compressor. So I tend to filter out any of that sort of unwanted let's call it garbage audio down there that I don't need before it hits the compressor so that the compressor isn't acting on that really low frequency stuff. It's really, it's acting more on my voice, less on that sort of woofy, uh, whether it's wind going by the microphone or anything like that. So I tend to put a EQ first just to filter, to eliminate some of those frequencies that I don't want. And then I could always add another EQ later, but that's my reasoning behind an EQ first, take it or leave it. I'm now happy with everything the exact way that it's sitting. I do wanna create one additional channel though. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a new audio track. We're gonna record in our dialogue track and then we have our comp track, which will allow us to drag stuff down. So this will make sense in just a minute. So I'm happy with this the exact way it is. I want this to be the exact way my session opens up every single morning when I go to do voiceover work. So let's go ahead and create a template. Now, interestingly, GarageBand doesn't actually have a way to create templates. So what we have to do is create a save as and then basically use that file as what we open with every day. So you just open the save as, and then you instantly name it something else. So let's go ahead and create a save as here. And we're gonna call this uh, voice over template. And I'm gonna save this to my desktop. And you can see it was just created over here, voice over template. So let's go ahead and close GarageBand like we're starting our morning from scratch. I'm gonna go here, double click voice over template. It's gonna open up GarageBand to the exact settings that we just had it. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do a save as, and I'm just gonna go ahead and save this as today's date, February 7th, 2023. And then these sessions will all live in the GarageBand folder and my voiceover template will live on my desktop. That's the way that I'd like to organize it because I feel like it's probably makes the most sense. So there we go, we've gone ahead and saved this. We know it's a new session. We're not overwriting that template anymore. So let's go ahead and record some audio. So. In this example, I'm just gonna record me talking like this to you guys so you guys can see exactly what I'm doing here without missing a beat. So this is me talking about GarageBand and I'm gonna mess this take up because I'm gonna say something I did, uh, I didn't mean to say that. No, this is me talking about GarageBand and I'm very excited to show you guys some advanced tips for editing. So let's go ahead and jump into the editing section of today's video. Perfect, I was very happy with that. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump into the edit tab and you can see here the edit window shows you a bit more of a zoomed in version of what this uh, timeline view is up here. So interestingly down here, there's a few different controls that you can get to know. Um, comma is gonna send our 
playhead back a couple of seconds, which can be very, very useful while we're scrubbing around. Now down here in the editing tab at the bottom, you can see the bottom half of this is used for selecting. And if I select and click at the top, it's gonna create its own region. I can also just delete that, or I could have actually just highlighted that section and deleted it like that. Uh, if you grab the top section, it's gonna move the audio file around and you can see they're not snapping. So they'll actually just go right over one another like this. And the top half is going to change between takes like so. So it's overwriting or underwriting, I guess. I don't think that's the right word for that, but we're going with it. And the bottom here, you can see it's going to subtract audio from anything that's selected. You notice both were selected there, so both audio files get shorter. That's We don't want that to happen too often, so you always wanna make sure you're selected on one audio file at a time, and then that's gonna allow you to drag that and get rid of that audio. Same thing at the end, does the exact same thing. Up here on the top right is looping, which is very much a music function. You probably won't ever use that in voiceover. So now there's a few different ways that people like to edit. Some people will go through one track at a time and they'll highlight little bits that they don't want, delete it and drag the other part back. And then they'll listen to the next section and say, yep, there's a false take all the way up to there. So let's get rid of that and drag this back like so play that, make sure it sounds good. They're happy with that, so then move on to the next one. Oh, this was a false take right here. And then there's the start of the better takes. So we'll delete that and drag this back. That's how some people tend to edit. In audio editing, I tend to prefer the playlist method where you record a bunch of takes and then you compile the pieces to make one great take. So let's say I really, really, really liked this piece here, which was take one. I'm gonna go ahead and highlight this like so. I'm very, very happy with that piece. I'm gonna option and click and drag down. And then that gives me that piece and I can just fire that to the beginning. Then here's my second take right there. Very happy with that. So I'm gonna go ahead, grab this, option, click, and drag down. And then I got these two pieces. So then you're basically just building a composite or a compiling of the best pieces of the one long recording. What's nice about this is it lets you maintain this long format recording. If you ever have to go back and drag out another piece, if the client says, hey, did we have another take of you saying that one section? Well, now you can actually see it side by side. So it's really, really easy to sub those out. And then when you're done, you're just gonna mute this channel. You can also just click on this clip itself and press M and that's gonna mute that channel. So let's go ahead and mute that. So we wanna make sure that we have our effects on this channel as well as this channel. And then we can export this audio here, which only contains the very, very best pieces of our recording. We can export that to our client. Now, one of the big limitations with GarageBand is that it doesn't have a way to crossfade between sections. This is kind of detrimental to voice recording. There is a small workaround that I can show you here. So what I'm gonna do is click on this comp and I'm going to option, hold option, click and drag down. It's gonna duplicate that channel. And then what you have to do is basically go through and checkerboard this. So let's say that this looked like this. I had a few other takes in here. Let's just say for argument's sake, it looked something like this. We're very happy with that. What I have to do then is go through this and delete every other one. This is the only workaround I've been able to find to add crossfades within GarageBand. It's very annoying. I really wish they'd add a crossfade option, but there isn't. So now what I'm gonna do is grab all of these recordings here and because we can edit all of them at once, which is kind of nice, I'm gonna extend the bottoms and extend the bottoms this way as well. Then I'm gonna press A on my keyboard, which brings up the volume automation here. This allows us to automate volume in real time. I'm gonna zoom in and press Command on the keyboard to bring up the pencil. This is gonna let us create nodes like this. What I wanna do is put a fade out right around the end of that one to the end. We're gonna do that. And then I'm gonna do this backwards on this one, like so. Then you're gonna to wanna to go through this whole entire audio file and painstakingly do this at every clip. If you're doing an audiobook, this is gonna take you like just a crazy amount of time to do this. So this is one of the downfalls of GarageBand. Now, if you're in this stage and you're thinking like, I do a ton of audiobooks, this is gonna take me a lifetime to go through these, you could probably do with an upgrade to Logic Pro. Of course, this is not a sponsored video in any way. Logic Pro is just the next step up from GarageBand. It's also made by Apple. I think it's $200 US. It might be a worthwhile investment for you. So either way, once you're done with this section, you can press the letter A and your automation will disappear. And you're basically just left with a nice, pretty looking recording. At this point, you'd be ready to export your recording for the client. And finally, I would really recommend adding some sort of an analyzer to the end of your recording chain. So I like to add either this PAS analyzer or something like that, that's basically gonna give me a bit of visual confirmation that my levels aren't too loud. And so you can actually play back your audio 
and make sure that you're mixing for the platform that you're sending your audio to. This is really important. We wanna make sure that we have really loud auditions. Again, it's gonna help us book more work and we wanna make sure that our levels are consistent from one recording to the next. So when the client says, hey, can you punch in and do some more pieces for this because we added this piece to our script or something like that, you can monitor your levels and say, yeah, I'm hitting that benchmark every single time. I know the client's gonna be happy. Well, I hope that today's video was super helpful for you. If you have any questions about using GarageBand for voiceover, let me know down in the comments below and I'd be more than happy to chat with you there. As always, happy auditioning and we'll see you in the next one.